Uh, my name is Abdel Jabar from Grand Sim Support of North America. Uh, first of all, I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe. So uh, in today's webinar, we'll talk about the facility access and paging solutions that Grandstream provides to your uh, business. So this is the agenda for today. I will provide an over overall description of the products, including their specs and features. Then I will go over certain scenario, uh, deployment scenarios to illustrate how these products can be integrated with each other through GDS integration and multicast paging. And then we will wrap up with the Q&A question answer. All right, so the first product that I want to introduce is the GSC 3570 that we just released a couple of months ago or so. Uh, the GSC 3570 is a powerful facility control station with intercom feature uh, designed to integrate with Grandstream's entire range of products, including the, uh, the GDS 3700 uh, series door stations, uh, GSC series of intercom and paging devices, and also the IP uh, cameras. And also you can integrate them with other IP phones like the GXP and GRP and the GXV uh, series. So this model works as a SIP device that you can add to your VoIP infrastructure. You can assign it a SIP account, you can call into it, you can call from it. Uh, it is an ideal solution for users looking for an integrated video control station. It features four alarm input and four alarm output ports that can be used to connect uh, third-party input devices such as infrared sensors and uh, door switches or output devices such as uh, uh, alarm sir uh, siren, uh, alarm, yeah, and strobe light. And you can also use the electric door striker because the GSC 3570 is built with the relay uh, output. So for those people who don't like to have like the relay installed on the door station itself, this solution can do the relay for you instead of the uh, instead of the door station itself. Also, the GSC 3570 features a seven-inch uh, touch screen LCD uh, and full duplex two-way HD audio with advanced echo cancellation. Uh, it offers a flexible network connectivity through a fast Ethernet port with a PoE and it supports dual band Wi-Fi including the 802.11 AC. And the next model is the GSC 3510. This is SIP intercom speaker. Uh, this one has a full duplex speaker phone, three directional uh, microphones with MMAD. Uh, it, it, it is also, uh, uh, it has also integrated Bluetooth with Wi-Fi. Uh, you can use this device to pair it with other devices. So in case, for example, you have a conferencing solution and you would like, you can use this device as a speaker and microphone for your conferencing devices. You can also use it as a paging device, as a SIP paging uh, device. So it comes with a PoE. It actually supports both standards, PoE and PoE+. Plus. Uh, it includes two-pin multipurpose input alarm. So for example, you can connect some device like a, uh, like a button to trigger the paging or trigger the alarm on the uh, on the device and also this device is an ideal solution especially for environments that use the multicast uh, paging with the uh, priority override. The next model is the GSC 3505. So the difference between this model and 3510 3510 is an intercom, this one is paging. In other words, it's only for audio uh, output. It doesn't have microphones, uh, but it provides HD speakerphone with full band, wide band codecs, including the G722 Opus. Uh, you can also connect it via Bluetooth uh, or also Wi-Fi. 
and it supports PoE and PoE Plus, and it has the same two-pin multipurpose input alarm that you can use to connect to third-party devices to, uh, to trigger a message or to trigger a paging on the device. And you can also include this device as a member of a multicast paging group in, uh, in your environment. And both these devices, they also act as a SIP endpoint. In other words, you can assign them uh, extensions, like SIP extensions, and you can call into them. You can configure auto answer, or you can configure them to ring, or you can con configure also the whitelist, which uh, specifies exactly the uh, source extensions that can call into the paging device. Next is the uh, Grand Stream door stations. So we have two models. The first model is the GDS3710. This one has an HD video uh, resolution uh, with uh, up to uh, 1080 pixel. And in terms of the specs and features uh, supported, uh, it has a hemispheric camera with 180 degrees, uh, view for monitoring wall to wall without blind spots. Uh, the GDS 3710 features two-way audio and HD video streaming to uh, smartphones, uh, video phones, or you can also connect it to an NVR for monitoring and recording. It also allows you to receive calls from GDS 3710 on specific SIP phones when the doorbell is uh, pressed. You can include one extension or you can include group of extensions so when someone presses the doorbell button the gds is just gonna send the call to uh, all the uh, all the extensions that are member of the same uh, the same group uh, this device uses the standard codec h264 which makes it compatible with third-party devices that support the same codec so in case you are deploying uh, GDS3710 with a third-party video, uh, IP video phone, as long as the, uh, the, uh, the video phone supports H.264, it's going to work with the, uh, the GDS3710. Uh, also, it is powered with uh, an advanced ISP or image sensor processor and it delivers a good performance in all lighting conditions thanks to the uh, implemented uh, WDR or wide dynamic uh, range which basically balances the light uh, uh, of the pictures. Uh, the GDS3710 also comes with two alarm input and two alarm output. Uh, you can use these to connect them to infrared sensors, uh, door switches, or you can just directly connect, uh, like for example, the uh, electric door strike to the GDS. So when you go to the GDS, just simply by entering your PIN number, you will be able to unlock the, the, uh, the door uh, using the key combination. You can also do a dual uh, factor authentication. In other words, you can use an RFID card together with the pin number to unlock the door and the uh, the type of RFID cards that are supported on the GDS 3710 are the uh, the uh, the ones that that uh, that that supports 125 kilohertz EM4100 uh, you can also configure GDS uh, with email and VoIP notification so there are so many options and so many features available in this device. We actually have specific webinars just about uh, this uh, device. And the next model, which, uh, which is uh, audio only, is the GDS3705. This one doesn't have a camera, but basically it has the same features that are built into the 3705. And it supports the same type of RFID reader, RFID card, I mean, uh, with 125 kilohertz. And the, it also comes with two alarm input and two alarm output that you can connect to third-party devices like electric uh, door strike, RFID uh, strobe lights, and, and so many devices that you can actually connect to the GDS. You can also configure it 
to trigger, for example, an alarm system. Uh, you can also connect it to your uh, access control station in case you don't want to use the relay on the uh, on the GDS. You can also use it with third-party readers that support Wigan uh, connection. Next is the Grandstream Wi-Fi cordless IP phones. So in this family, we have two models. The first model is the WP820. Uh, these cordless phones, uh, they connect through Wi-Fi. So they're not decked phones, they are Wi-Fi phones, and they support the standard uh, ABGN, uh, dual band, of course. Uh, they include rechargeable lithium ion uh, batteries with 7.5 hour talk time and 150 hour standby time. You can configure up to two SIP accounts with advanced call features like uh, call forwarding, transfer, call park, putting calls on hold, retrieving calls on hold. Uh, it, it also includes Bluetooth integration. So you can integrate this device with uh, wireless uh, Bluetooth headsets. Uh, one thing about this model is that they come with the push to talk button that you can configure to broadcast a message using the multicast uh, the multicast uh, packets. So just by configuring the push to talk button, you can configure it actually in three modes. You can use the push to talk where you only have a group of phones, especially WP phones that you can use to uh, you can use them as a walkie-talkie or you can configure the push to talk button as a multicast paging or you can use it also as a panic uh, button uh, usually I, I see a lot of people use it as a multicast paging because it provides you with a lot of flexibility and i'm going to talk later about the multicast paging and how you can use the wp uh, 800 with other devices like the GSC uh, 3500. So this is the uh, small model. Uh, it basically has the same features. It comes with the push to talk button. It supports multicast paging groups. You can configure it to two SIP accounts and it also includes all the advanced call features like putting calls on hold, transfer calls, handling two calls at a time with call waiting. Uh, it comes with a rechargeable lithium-ion battery. The main difference between this model and the WP820 is that this model doesn't support Bluetooth, and it has a smaller LCD screen, and also the talk time, which is six hours for this model, and the standby time, which is 120 uh, hours for this uh, model. So this is about the GDS integration and how you can include or integrate GDS with the uh, devices that we just uh, uh, described. So Grandstream basically offers a, a wide range of products that can seamlessly integrate with our facility access system like the GDS 3710, 3705. And this integration includes special features like uh, video preview and easy open door shortcuts. Uh, so just to, uh, to, uh, to explain how these devices can integrate with the GDS 3710 with the Wi-Fi phone WP820 and the control station GSC 3570 and also the SIP uh, paging speaker 3505. We're gonna. I'm gonna show you. Uh, uh, I think three deployment scenarios that describe how you can deploy these uh, devices. So this is the uh, first example, and this is an example of uh, of a normal uh, call flow between the GDS 3710 and the other devices connected through Wi-Fi, which represents a full Grandstream ecosystem that centers around uh, facility management. So in this example, the GDS controls access at the front door, and the UCM is providing the voice infrastructure for all the devices uh, shown. So all the devices are registered to the UCM. 
and the UCM access points, I'm sorry, the Grandstream access points, GWN 7600 are providing the wireless backbone for Wi-Fi capable devices such as 3570, WPA20, and the GSC 3500 region uh, systems. So in this example, the GDS is assigned an extension to register to the UCM, which makes it work also as a SIP end point. You can use the keypad to dial uh, extensions directly the same way like uh, with IP phones, or you can configure the doorbell button to ring a single or multiple extensions like in our examples. And the GDS is built with a camera to stream HD resolution video to the devices that support videos such as the GSC 3570 and also the uh, Grand Stream IP video phones like the GXV 3300. Uh, the GDS can be set up with a pin to unlock the door remotely. And for security purposes, the GDS supports the option to whitelist the devices that are allowed to unlock the door through DTMF or the open door shortcut. Uh, one thing to remember here is that the UCM is not required in this, uh, uh, in this implementation because all of these uh, devices support direct IP uh, calling. So instead of configuring GDS with extension numbers, uh, you can instead use the IP addresses of the devices. Next is the GSC 3570. This one provides an HD video stream experience at uh, 30 frame per second played on a seven inch uh, LCD screen with when the video is triggered uh, by the GDS. It's also, uh, or it, it is also integrated with the open door shortcut and higher ring volume. WPA20 does provide GDS integration with video capabilities, uh, which streams at, at, I would say approximately 1.5 frame per second. It can be set up with the open door shortcut to unlock the door. And in this case, uh, WP is, is, a, is, a, is a good solution for mobile uh, users because it has roaming capabilities that allow the user uh, to receive calls from GDS anywhere in the wireless local area network. And for outside and noisy environments, GSC 3505 and GSC 3510 can be deployed to work as a loud ringer besides the paging and intercom uh, functionalities that are built into these two devices. So here is a brief animation, animation of uh, three scenarios of what you can expect from these devices and how you can deploy them. So in the first scene, the delivery driver walks over the GDS and triggers a voice call to a designated party that is configured on the GDS. The trigger can be done via motion detection or by pressing the doorbell button, which is uh, the case in this example. And here the call is sent to the UCM, which then forwards it through the wireless infrastructure to the administrator using the WPA20 who can observe the person at the door as well as grant access if needed using the open door shortcut. In this example, the second one, the GDS forwards a voice over the GSC 3500 paging systems that can be configured to provide loud ring back throughout the warehouse, which can ultimately be answered by uh, a roaming employee via the WP820. So the WP820 in this example, even if it's not a member of the group of extensions that is configured or that are configured in the, uh, in the GDS, you can always whitelist the devices that can call into GDS to unlock the door. So for this, for this example, we can whitelist the IP address of the WPA20 so that if someone hears the door ringing, they can just simply call the GDS and unlock the door. So in the third example, which depicts GDS integration with devices deployed remotely, 
So with working home from or working from home being prevalent nowadays, Grandstream still allows you uh, and your business to function normally even when the key employees are not able to physically be on site. So in this example, the call is sent through the UCM to the remote employee who has privileges to see and open the door for the visitor by the GDS. And since there is a package available, the remote worker pages the local workers. It could be the security guard or it could be some other workers working from the office to physically open the door to receive the parcel from the uh, the delivery uh, the, the delivery guy. So these are the uh, the how to and how to set up the uh, GDS with the WP. Let me just remove this one here with the WP820. So as I mentioned earlier, there are two options. You can use SIP registration when you have UCM on IPPBX in place, or you can use direct IP calling, which does not require an IPPBX uh, in that implementation. So in case you are using SIP registration, the first thing that you need to do is assign an extension to the uh, GDS. You go to the UCM or your IPPBX, pick an extension and then assign it to the GDS to register. And then you go to uh, the web UI of the GDS and their uh, door system settings, basic settings. And the option where it says number called when doorbell pressed, that's where you enter the group of extensions that you want to call when someone presses the doorbell. You can include one extension or you can include a group of extensions and you just separate them uh, with comma. Also, there's the option where you can configure the remote pin number. So if someone calls from GDS, it rings the phone, the phone also needs to be configured with the same pin number that you entered or you set up under the remote pin to open the door. So the same configuration for the WP820, you can basically do the same thing for the other phones. So if you have, for example, a GRP phones or GXV phones, you can do the same thing. The first thing, make sure you assign it an extension. And that extension should be a member of the extensions in the GDS when someone presses the doorbell. Of course, you need to set the accounts to active and make sure that the account is registered. The next thing you go to end the value added service, and there's an option for door system. Uh, this, uh, this value added service, you can actually configure it with third party door stations. Uh, but in case you have GDS, just make sure you choose the door system type GDS. And it's pretty simple. You just uh, enter the name of the GDS and then the extension number that is assigned to the GDS device. So in our case, the GDS is assigned the extension 1050. And then the remote pin number that you configured and the remote pin to open the door, that's the same pin that you need to uh, enter uh, and their access password. Save and apply the changes. So in this case, if, so, in this case, if someone presses the doorbell button and the WP, uh, WPA20 rings, the LCD screen is going to show a preview of the person that is, uh, that, 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 that is in front of the door. And it's also going to give you an option or the open door shortcut, which is an option that allows you to unlock the door just by pressing that's soft key. In case you don't have an IP PBX, uh, let's say you only have GDS and IP phones. Uh, in that case, you can use what we call direct IP calls. GDS does support that, and most of our IP phones do support direct IP calls. So the main difference between the previous configuration and this configuration is that instead of using extension numbers, you're gonna use the uh, IP address of the device and the SIP, uh, uh, the port number for SIP, uh, which is usually 5060. Unless your phone is using a random port is something that you have to disable in case you're using random port. 
disable it so that the phones can use the default port number 5060 for the first account. So here we're gonna include multiple IP addresses of multiple devices. And when you go to the WPA20, one thing that you have to do is uh, disable SIP registration on the device. And then you go back to the value added service and you enter the same pin number as I showed you earlier that matches the one that you configured and their GDS. And another thing on the GDS that you have to do is you need to make sure that direct IP call is enabled on the GDS. Otherwise, using IP addresses, it's not gonna work. And this option is available under, uh, the, under phone settings, and then phone settings, and you look for the option that says enable direct IP calls on the GDS. Next, I'm going to talk about the multicast paging, which is, uh, uh, which is a service or feature that is built on most of Grandstream uh, uh, IP phones and also SIP devices like paging devices. So one thing to know about multicast paging is that you can group or you can put group of extensions in one paging group and then assign them uh, to, or, or you configure them uh, actually, you can figure them to listen to a specific multicast IP address and specific port number. And I'm going to show you later how you can do that. And multicast paging, the advantage of it is that it does not require an IPPBX uh, uh, in the environment. And it's also useful, even if when you have an IPPBX, because when you have a large group of uh, extensions that are member of the same paging group, Paging feature requires a lot of uh, resources. So it's, a, it's, a, it's very intensive in terms of the CPU resources that it takes from the IP PBX. And that's why we always recommend using multicast paging because it doesn't require uh, your IP PBX and the traffic is basically sent as a multicast uh, traffic. And also you can include uh, the maximum number that you can, you can include in a multicast uh, paging group depends on the size of your uh, subnet. So for example, if you're using subnet mask of slash 24, that gives you up to 254 devices that you can include all of them in one same uh, paging group. If you are using a subnet mask of uh, slash uh, 16, that gives you more than 65 thousand devices that you can include in the same uh, paging or multicast uh, group. And also the multicast paging group on the Grandstream devices support the uh, paging priority, which, which I mentioned earlier. And the, this option is especially useful in an environment where there is high demand for paging. In other words, uh, multicast uh, paging enables certain paging resources or source devices to have priority over others when paging to uh, designated devices or group of devices. So by creating these priorities, uh, users can ensure that the most important pages are being prioritized and also are being transmitted through intercom and pages uh, and paging uh, devices. So this is an example of the uh, roaming capabilities built into the WPA20. The WPA20 uses what we call the RSSI or the Received Signal Strength Indicator to, ro to roam between uh, APs. And the RSSI basically is an indicator of the strength of the wireless uh, signal. Uh, this is an example of multicast paging in a school district. So we have multiple GSC uh, speakers uh, deployed, you can use the WP800 uh, to page all these devices using uh, the cordless Wi-Fi phone. Again, you can always go to the GSC uh, and you can specify the IP addresses that can call into them or you can whitelist them so that uh, not everyone can call into the GSC uh, uh, 35 uh, 100. And multicast paging, as I mentioned, it's straightforward. So for example, 
the uh, in the previous example, we used the WP a tender to initiate the um, multicast paging. And as I mentioned in one of my previous slides, that the WP A20 is built with the push to talk button. So you can configure that push to talk button with multicast paging. You uh, basically specify the multicast IP address and it should be uh, within the range that is used by multicast packets. And then you enter a port. It could be any uh, IP addresses or any port number as long as they all fall within the uh, multicast uh, IP uh, addresses, which ranges from 2, uh, 2 224.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 up to 239.255.255.255. So you can pick any IP address from that range. So when you configure the WP uh, with the uh, multicast IP address, you go to the receiving devices, which is in our case GSC 3510 or 3505, and then you configure these devices to listen to traffic on that multicast IP uh, address. And as you can see, the, uh, the configuration of the multicast listening, you can configure up to 10 and you can prioritize them. So in case, for example, you have uh, traffic that is more critical, uh, you can put the multicast IP address for that traffic as the top one. So if someone, for example, paging using the second multicast IP address and someone tries to use the paging of the first one, which is more critical, the uh, GSC is going to stop the second one in priority and place the uh, first one in the list. So Abdel, thank you again for your presentation and thank you for everyone that attended. Um, again, stay safe and we will make sure we get this webinar uploaded on our YouTube channel um, before the end of this week.